Hello everyone, Rich Dance with your Defensive Tactics Technique of the Week. Today we're going to be talking about realistic training weapons. Frank, in, in today's law enforcement world, we have the advantage of having some pretty realistic training weapons. Yeah. Um, some agencies are relegated to using their, their actual firearm for training, and, and while that can be done safely, that's certainly less than ideal for several reasons. There's always a chance, no matter how many training pr uh, protocols you have in place, safety protocols you have in place, that, that a live round can be introduced into the training environment. We think it can never happen, but uh, sadly, but we see the accident sadly it does happen. Year, yeah. So a way you can make sure that that doesn't happen is by using some molded uh, plastic training weapons like this. Now, this is pretty darn realistic in every way except that it's orange. Now why is it orange? Because you know and I know that it's a training weapon when it's pointed at you. Then there's no threat. There's, there's no, no open barrel. It's a solid chunk. The color gives it away. I mean, we also are both aware of the fact that some of the bad guys on the street have taken to painting real guns. So just because you say, oh, it's neon orange, it's not a threat, or it's pink, or it's yellow. Um, I've even seen some competitors that they put racing stripes on their guns and they're purple with black tiger stripes or whatever. Can't take that it makes for granted. Faster, right? right. Well, you know, I know an instructor who says that 50% of performing fast is looking fast. There you go. He's a very well known instructor, too. Um, but yeah, when, when you look at it, you can't assume it. And we know these things, even though it's a, a molded replica, we both satisfied ourselves before we ever started segments, ever we ever start videotaping, that they actually are. Exactly. So, I mean, good good uh, idea to have these types of weapons to train with. Obviously, the weight is a little different, but you know, the, the thing is, is that these are made to exacting dimensions. Here I have a, a holster with a um, Blackhawk uh, training gun in it. and it works just like a real firearm would. I mean, it holsters. For holster fit and function, yes. Snaps into place. Um, it's an excellent training aid, you know. It's, it's, it's certainly better than something that's a, like we used to use in martial arts, it's like a rubberized or a wooden gun. A wooden gun, I mean, right. It, when, when you're training mechanical skills, it's imperative that you have the fit and function Rob, properly. Don't put that down yet, because I, I want to show something on the other side. It's not just training weapons. I mean, we, we've got a radio here. You've got, uh, you know, magazines. So when it comes to realism of training, uh, body movements, mechanical function, you have the ability to draw your radio if you need to simulate communications. Your weapon's going to holster and be drawn the same way. You have magazines if you needed to simulate that reload to make some instructor out there happy. And there are those out there. You know, when you look at weapons that can be used against you and you have tools like this, uh, this box cutter, we have other examples available. But the bottom line is, while using a safe tool, making it as realistic as possible becomes imperative when you're cross-using it with your other equipment. And another issue is to even add another sense of realism, you can use airsoft or simunition, and a lot of times those weapons will function the same. The slide will reciprocate, all right. that stuff, and that's taking it to a whole nother level. Of course, when you have projectiles, you have to have proper safety equipment, and you have to always be concerned, again, that somehow there may be some live round that's introduced into the environment. Right. That's very useful training. I, I don't mean to discourage that. I would encourage that. Absolutely. But there's a time when, when these dummy guns actually come in very handy. When you think about what we do on the street, 95% of the time, we're not shooting. We're not striking a bag or a suspect. We're not performing that action that we've trained to perform, but we are doing all of those things that require us to manipulate our tools. Holstering and unholstering safety, when you gotta put it in a lockbox going into a courtroom or going into an evidence area or whatever. You know, when you're handling evidence, when you're doing anything, putting on your gear, taking off your gear, we do this all the time and handling it is a repetitive motion. Sometimes we take those things for granted and we don't index along the slide, we go to holster with our finger on the trigger, we do something stupid. Practicing with these allows us to be repetitive in our motions and learn good skills and without having to use a live firearm or even an unloaded firearm. Exactly. You know, you get a new officer that starts with your department, maybe he's issued a holster he's not familiar with. You issue yeah. him one of these training guns. He can go home and practice as many reps as he wants. Rather than issuing that live fire weapon and saying, hey, go sit down in careful. front of your TV sure and unloaded. see how many times exactly. you can draw comfortably. And you know, yeah. with our agency, as I'm sure is the case uh, in every agency, you don't issue someone a firearm until they've qualified with it. Well, you can issue them their gear and their holster the first day they're hired, let them go home and practice with this so when they're out on the range, they're able to do it safely and efficiently. And it actually can cut down on range training time. I espoused this some time ago. If the first day of the academy we issued somebody their entire belt set with safety gear, the, the, 
replicated items, a radio, um, a flashlight, a baton, if, um, magazines and a weapon. And then throughout the academy, we had a protocol where when we issued the appropriate command, they had to find cover, draw their weapon, get on target. So we, we taught them the basic marksmanship skills up front. We front loaded them with grip, stance, sight alignment, sight picture and they're taking cover, they're already moving. We get all that trained into them, then when we get to the range, we don't have to try to train that, that's already done. It's just about managing recoil and things like that. It's just you know? about trigger press, Fundamentals. breath control, exactly, issuing commands while you're shooting. We can cut down on our training time on the range and integrate these things instinctively into their performance through the use of proper tools. Great stuff, so no reason, I mean, these are very affordable. Uh, you need to have these types of weapons to make your training realistic and safe.